Continental Hotel in St. Augustine. So we've gone a little bit into why he decided to build a grand hotel in St. Augustine, but I will still start from beginning. Being from New York or living in New York and being among the upper crust, he wanted to convince these Northeasterners, these wealthy Northeasterners to come to what was then more of a swamp and certainly the Southern equivalent of the Wild West. He knew that he had to build something grand to draw his friends down to the wilds of Florida. And his Ponce de Leon Hotel in St. Augustine was the first of these impressive places to stay along his East Coast Railway on the Atlantic coast of Florida. Flagler wanted the, I guess, the frontier of Florida to be the future winter Newport. And the Ponce de Leon, or the Ponce, which, if you look up the Ponce now, it is not the Ponce de Leon. (laughs) (laughs) It's nothing... Don't want to... It's nothing lewd. Okay. It's just not the Grand Hotel. So it's pretty funny if you look up mm-hmm. the Ponce. And there are multiple ones. There's one in Atlanta. But if you say the yeah. Ponce, St. Augustine, it's more of, shall we say, a motel. Historic Ponce de Leon, if you want more images or history. Because the Ponce, St. Augustine, is like, meh. So the Ponce de Leon, I'm going to call it the Ponce in this because it's easier. And it was built... Sorry, excuse me. It was designed by John Career and Thomas Hastings, who were connections in Scandal Sheets, draftsmen for McKim, Mead, and White. Oh, that's right. Before forming their own firm. The construction of the Spanish Renaissance behemoth began on December 1st, 1885. So why St. Augustine? We discussed that Flagler brought his second wife to Jacksonville on their honeymoon, and that they included in this honeymoon a detour which took them south to the village of St. Augustine. Although local Floridians and even some Southeasterners were familiar with the healing properties of Florida's climate, the tropical moist air and warm weather, Northerners did not know as much about the historic town of St. Augustine. Flagler saw potential. One of the reasons is that he, like Caroline said, he stayed with a friend because there were no fancy places for him to stay. So he imagined a way he could entice the wealthy northern set away from the ice and cold with a grand hotel. Deciding on the style for the hotel was apparently a challenge as he wanted the structure to have all modern conveniences but designed of a style that was still appropriate to the context. Since they were the architecture firm of the day, Flagler did not have a hard time deciding to use McKim, Mead, and White. Maybe he was being economically savvy and maybe he wanted to give two young men the commission of a lifetime. But Flagler's decision to hire draftsmen, Career and Hastings led to the founding of one of the most well-known firms of the Gilded Age. So he originally was going to hire McKim, Mead, and White, but then... No, he essentially did. He just chose these draftsmen to do the design instead Right, because of... I'm sure they had a lot of men in their office. Right. And both Career and Hastings had gone through architecture programs. Yeah. I'm just surprised that, like, McKim, Mead, and White would have been like, hey, Here. have this really huge commission, unless they were, I mean, they were busy, so, I mean, they might have just been like, eh, we don't want to deal with a stupid hotel. I agree. Swamp. So No, I think it is interesting, and he was still going through their office, but these young men were so promising that when they went to work for Henry Flagler, they just formed their own firm with apparently the blessing of McKim, Mead, and White, who at that time, of course, they, they already had a client list of their own, and I suppose it would not have been a big deal to lose draftsmen, because if you're that busy and that successful, you're able to let some go. I'm not sure how much they would have wanted to let Flagler go, but anyway, that's what happened. Flagler hires Career and Hastings. They were 26 and 24, respectively. Wow. And they designed the ponts. The contract was a million dollars, and this is 1885 million million dollars so this is a heck of a lot of money right to create this palatial resort in a market that was just starting to take off because again there's nothing there there are no hotels there well by the time they start they actually broke ground there was there, one yeah the san marco which sure. was kind of just your typical wooden but it wasn't on the level yeah it wasn't of yeah. the ponce or eventually the one across the street the, light, the well, lightner now. alcazar thank you yeah so 
Thanks to Flagler and the success of the Ponce, Carrera and Hastings were asked to design Flagler's mansion on Palm Beach called Whitehall, after which they went on to have a client list that included the most notable names of the day and of the Gilded Age. Rockefeller, Carnegie, Frick, Guggenheim, Morgan, Vanderbilt, DuPont. Their decision to design in the Spanish Renaissance style and the Ponce's popularity influenced the architecture of Florida for the next 50 years. In the first decade of the firm's existence, they designed over 100 buildings. Now, of course, not all of them were built, but the point is they got 100 commissions and they designed that, that many buildings. So we can rewind a little bit more. Career was born on November 9th, 1858 in Rio de Janeiro to the son of a wealthy Brazilian coffee trader. His mother was Scottish and educated in a Baltimore convent. Wow. Since his family had been living in Baltimore, I guess they emigrated there since the late 18th century. Carrere was educated overseas in Switzerland, then at the École de Beaux-Arts and graduated in 1882. Hastings was born on March 1st, 1860 in New York to a Presbyterian minister. This is the connection to Henry Flagler. Ah, Dr. Hastings was Henry Flagler's pastor. Really? Thomas Hastings, the son, never associated with any church or any faith throughout his life. He went to Columbia for two years. He quit college and worked in the offices of the Herte brothers as a draftsman under Charles Atwood. Then he spent four years in Paris at the École de Beaux-Arts. He returned to the U.S. This timeline must have been somewhat similar to career. So he returned to draft for McKim, Mead, and White and founded the partnership with uh, Career soon after. The team of young architects designed extremely impressive Beaux-Arts and various revival-styled homes in the Northeast and elsewhere in the country. Their best-known creations are probably the main branch of the New York Public Library, the one with the lions, built in 1911, and the House and Senate office buildings in D.C. constructed in 1908 to 1909. Also worth a look or a visit are the Spanish Baroque-style Jefferson Hotel in Richmond, 1895, the Chateau S. Cairnwood Mansion in Bryn Athen, Pennsylvania, also 1895, and the French classical Vernon Court in Newport, Rhode Island, 1901. Besides the Ponts, Carrere and Hastings designed other impressive structures that contribute to the historic fabric of St. Augustine, changing the skyline and the scale of the city. Other commissions included the Alcazar Hotel, now the Leitner Museum, right across the street from the Ponts on uh, King Street. Grace United Methodist Church, M Memorial Presbyterian Church, and Kirkside, Flagler's own residence in town. Hastings outlived Carrere by close to two decades. John Carrere sadly died in an auto accident in 1911 Aww. at the height of the firm's success. Thomas Hastings went on to manage the firm until his also untimely death in 1929. He had a, an operation for appendicitis and did not make it. So back to the main event. Visitors to the Ponce de Leon Hotel would find themselves at first impressed by its sheer size. The lot that it is on comprises five acres and the hotel occupies most of the property. Although it's only four stories high, so it's not the height really, but just the mass that is overwhelming. After entering through an open 10,000 square foot courtyard, guests would find themselves in a lobby leading to the Grand Rotunda. Looking up, one would find a dome supported by oak columns and underfoot elaborate mosaics graced the floor. Behind the dome of the rotunda was the oval-shaped dining hall seating 700 with stained glass windows, highly polished floors, and enormous columns of antique oak. The ceiling art representing the history of St. Augustine was painted by Virgilio Toyetti, one of the foremost artists of the day. The Ponce was the first large multi-story building in the country constructed of cast-in-place concrete. The ingredients of this material were Portland cement, sand, and locally quarried coquina. The concrete was mixed on site and poured into wooden forms three inches at a time. Since the mixture contained so much shell, there was no need for additional exterior finishing. What you see is not a textured stucco, but the concrete itself. So they would have gone and quarried the coquino and crushed it up put it together with the sand and cement and whatever for the concrete. That's what gave it the texture. Okay. The contrast with the rich terracotta and brick detailing against the silver concrete makes for a truly stunning facade. As if the type of construction wasn't groundbreaking enough, the site was even more of a challenge. 
true to Florida terrain, the hotel, which is not even directly on water, was to be constructed on marshy wasteland. So I'm assuming pilings. I was trying to look for construction details. It's a giant trash heap. Right, but you need something to hold it or else it'll, like, something of that like, magnitude. Really? I mean, they just don't put a lot of fill in there? But you still need footings. Like, you still need something structural to hold the weight of a hotel that's that size. Okay. I could not find structural Details. information on the foundation itself. Although, there are drawings available online. So, one can research that. After a little to over two years of construction, it opened January 10th, 1888, containing 540 rooms of varying sizes and designs and operated by Flagler's Florida East Coast Hotel Company. The hotel was an impressive stop on his East Coast Railway, and it was only one of many grand hotels along the Atlantic coast, which Flagler dreamed would become the American Riviera. Once checked in, you would never really have to leave. The Ponce de Leon offered landscaped courts for morning or afternoon walks, reading and relaxing nooks, tropical gardens, and fountains to impress the guests who were used to the luxury and lavish resorts and clubs of the north. On the fourth floor, the hotel boasted a grand solarium that overlooked the town and bayfront. Flagler had secured the talents of numerous artisans to dial the interior opulence level to 11. Lewis Comfort Timpany designed the stained glass windows in the dining room and throughout the hotel for a total of 79, the most significant in suit collection in the country. New York City design firm Potier and Stimus provided the furnishings. Bernard Maybeck of San Francisco's Palace of Fine Arts fame designed the guest rooms. Architect Emmanuel Masqueray who went on to supervise the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, created a watercolor rendering, and George Maynard designed the murals in the rotunda and dining room, whose theme was exploration. Maynard was asked to recreate these murals for the Library of Congress. In 1899, Flagler created space for artists to work while the hotel was open during its three-month season. That just blows my mind that I they know. were like that. It was like, well, you, you spent all this money, build this beautiful, beautiful place, and then, oh, we're only open for three months a year. There was a note about, you know, St. Augustine isn't the balmy Florida climate that we think of Yeah, when you think of Florida. It's much more moderate because it's yeah. in northern Florida. Right. And so you you don't have this tropical, you know, like Miami or Palm Beach or whatever. Yeah. You still have a winter. Right. Um, so, yeah, the, the season was fairly short. Yeah, we spent summers there, but we also spent Christmas there. I do remember one year it was colder there than it was in upstate yep. South Carolina. Because it still freezes. Yeah. I'm wondering what, it said three-month season, but I'm wondering what months those were, because it's still nicer than New York, right? So oh, is yeah. the season still December, January, February, or January, February, March? Because it's not summer. Right. That's not high season. I would Possibly probably January through March, just because people wouldn't have wanted to leave New York during the holidays. Yeah, because of, of all the parties and things like that. I want to say that we have a similar a project that we're working on in so where it's an old hotel and it was sure. only open for a couple of months out of the year. I don't know how they made money, the but I, I guess know. you don't have to staff yeah. for nine months. You're not staffing and it's like limited. It's like The Shining <laughs> there's i've never seen there's it's very short of what i know i need to see it i need I'm, that and rosemary's baby is on my I list i haven't seen that either okay we need to have a movie night apparently i'm not sure i mean i i will for sure watch the shining again but i'm not sure i don't know i guess i ha you have to say you've seen it though right right sure yeah okay. so three month season shining <laughs> the works it's of all connected <laughs> the works of one prominent artist Martin Johnson Heed hangs in the Met, the National Gallery, and the White House. The addition of these artist spaces, so this is one of the guys that Flagler hired to do art during the season, who went on to become super famous. The addition of these artist spaces was smart marketing. Primarily New England artists produced works that promoted Florida. Exhibitions and receptions that showcased the resulting art were major social events for guests. So they could brag about these fun parties they went to while they were staying in this crazy place called Florida. The hotel offered two curious innovations for an 1880s structure. In spite of the geographic location, the hotel offered steam heat in every guest room. 
So you wouldn't necessarily think you're going to need steam heat in Florida. But like we say, it does get the cold. seasons in the winter, right. it gets cold. So it's nice to have if you want it. 